Well, hello there everyone, my name is Cameron and this is Def Come True. It's the uh, latest release from Danganronpa developer Kazutaka Kadaka and it's just launched for iOS, Android and Nintendo Switch. As you can see, it's an FMV thriller type thing uh, where you'll sit and watch uh, a few minutes of live action footage then eventually be asked to make some sort of decision. Uh, some of these will impact on the plot and others just serve up small detours to uh, explore. This was one of the more, or one of my more anticipated games of the year. And uh, unfortunately, for a variety of different reasons that we'll get into in a minute or two, it's proved to be one of the more disappointing. Um, that said, it does have a pretty neat premise, uh, I'll give it that. Basically, you're a young guy who wakes up in this weird uh, hotel, then suddenly finds out that he's a serial killer, uh, obviously suffering from some sort of severe amnesia, but he keeps getting these brief flashbacks to really grisly murders that he might or might not have committed at some point. Um, so everyone else in the hotel is pretty certain that he is a murderer, and so you kind of have to contend with them while working out the truth behind your uh, pretty, pretty nasty predicament. Yeah, so early on your investigation is kind of brought to an uh, abrupt end uh, by your untimely death. You do end up waking up right back where you started though, uh, with all the memories from your first run or first life I suppose. Uh, so it looks like you're in some sort of uh, time loop where you start back at the beginning of the day after every death. Basically means that the plot is built around exploring the hotel for a bit, bumping into some of the weird cast, uh, being murdered in one of many different ways, then starting over with your knowledge from the first run. And we'll use this knowledge basically to answer the correct questions next time or, or pick the correct options on your next run, if that makes sense. I've now finished it a couple of times the whole way through and I feel like I've seen basically everything that there is to see, which basically means that the decisions don't really have um, that great an impact on the course of the story. And anytime you're given more than a couple of different choices to make, it really feels like you're being told off for picking the wrong one. So it feels like you're sort of being funneled down the game's uh, correct chosen path if that makes sense. It can feel pretty restrictive and uh, basic even as far as uh, modern FMV games go, uh, so definitely don't expect anything like telling lies or um, her, her story. Uh, this feels probably about uh, 20 years older than both of them. I do think that some people might be able to forgive its flaws, especially if you're a fan of the Danganronpa series. The hotel itself is a pretty interesting environment, uh, even though you're not actually exploring it, you're just watching what amounts to, I guess, a two hour long film. One area where the game falls down, I think, though, is um, its cast, strangely, considering Danganronpa has such an eclectic mix of strange characters and they all get their own time to shine. This does too, to an extent, but so much of the screen time goes to uh, the two leads you're seeing here, so the police officer and the amnesiac serial killer, and they're both fine, but they are not nearly as interesting as the side characters. And yeah, that can kind of be a bit of a shame, I'd say, especially because it feels like the game only peaks when those characters are around. There's a newscaster who's really, um, I don't know, everything that comes out of his mouth is strange and interesting and very funny, but he is used so briefly that it feels like he's completely wasted almost. Uh, there are extra uh, little videos that you can unlock by collecting death medals, which are um, unlocked every time you discover a new death. And those videos are, I'm sure they're very funny and very interesting, but they're also not subtitled in English, which means that I, I can't tell what's going on. I have watched some of them though, and um, there are also behind the scenes ones that show the making of the game. And also I'm sure they'd be interesting, but once again, they're not subtitled. I'm sure this will be something that's fixed um, at some point, but for now it is a bit of a shame. So yeah. The plot starts out fairly strong, I would say, at least uh, in terms of its premise. Uh, as it goes on though, I don't know, the pacing I think sort of sinks it. There are these really, really long dialogue scenes that don't really move, and I think that's something that's that's more tied in with the direction. It feels pretty flat. This is actually one of the better scenes in the game. You've got this character that feels ripped straight out of Danganronpa. She is a, a serial killer enthusiast, I think. 
um, is probably the best way to describe her. She discovers that you're living in the hotel, you being one of the most famous serial killers in the country at that time, she's instantly drawn to you and assumes that this is some sort of Saw style death game I guess that she wants to get involved in. Just little bits like this sort of lift the game up, even if the acting is, is of, of questionable quality, it does kind of work in the moment. But then also sort of ties into another one of my problems with the game and that is the tone feels a bit all over the place. So the various deaths you'll see along the way are pretty boring and I wasn't really expecting like Friday the 13th level gore or shocks or anything but it, they feel for the most part just kind of flat. I know I'm saying flat time and again but that's probably one of the better ways to describe this game which sounds awful but that's just kind of how I feel. Most of the two to two and a half hour runtime is spent with the two leads just chatting sort of awkwardly back and forth. And obviously I won't get into spoilers or anything like that, but suffice to say the twists and turns are not really worth it either. I don't know when they come, they just, they don't feel particularly surprising or novel or interesting. The game in general feels like an experiment that never really nails any of its moving parts. So from the cast to the plot to the direction, one by one they all sort of fall down and leave this game that kind of just feels like a bit of a shrug in the end and that is a crying shame because the Danganronpa games are super special and interesting and memorable which I don't think this is a, I don't think that is a quality that this really has. Um, I finished this maybe a week ago and already there are portions of it that I've had to go back and replay to remind myself of and yeah just all told a bit of a downer. Hope you do enjoy it more than I did though and um, if this has piqued your interest it is available now on iOS, Android and Nintendo Switch. It is a premium game as well, meaning no ads or iApps or anything like that. I uh, hope you've enjoyed guys, I've been Cameron and as always I will see you in the next one.